please subscribe and don't forget to press the bell icon to get notified whenever we upload a new video. Hi, a very good afternoon. You are watching Your Stocks on CNBC TV 18. I'm Ikta Batra. With me is Nigel D'Souza and it's turning out to be a good session for us. A bit topsy-turvy but nonetheless now at around 10,218 as we speak. We have a lot of numbers uh, which are coming in and which are expected to come in. So for example, we had Kansai Nerulak which uh, reported numbers some time ago as well or maybe just a few minutes ago. So. Um, uh, a couple of uh, stocks to watch out for, especially from the broader markets. For the bank nifty, it's been more of a volatile session, Nigel, as compared to the nifty. It's now recovered and maybe the bank nifty intraday should come up for you as well. That's right, uh, Ekta. In fact, you know, the nifty bank had a run of around 600 points approximately. So that, in fact, you know, it's a, a bit of an underperformer in today's trade. But remember, it's had a big run. Good to see all three frontliners trading well in the green. You have the nifty, you have the nifty bank, as well as the mid cap index though the breadth of the market still in favor of the decline. So maybe by the time we wind up, if in fact we could get some support coming in from the European markets as well, most of them were trading in the green the last time I checked. If that continues, then maybe in fact we could see a tad bit of improvement even on that advanced uh, decline ratio. But first up, let's run you through all the top stories. Then in fact, uh, we'll get chatting with uh, various uh, stocks and answer all your queries. The Nifty sets new intraday highs, but it's failing to hold on to those gains. Nifty Bank is a bit of an underperformer in trade. Remember, Axis Bank slips in trade ahead of its earnings that are scheduled tomorrow. Metals shine brightest today with steel stocks leading the pack on strong Asian queues, but some private banks like Karnataka Bank and Indusin Bank take a hit. And uh, Reliance Industries uh, fails to hold on to early gains despite a surprisingly strong performance coming in from Jio in the second quarter. But Jio's numbers have a positive rub off on other telecom stocks. Bharti Airtel is up close to 4%. Idea as well as up more than four and a half percent. And it's a strong listing for Godrej Agrovet. The stock lists at 628.8, nearly a 40% premium to the issue price, currently up 29% in trade. And it's a done deal for Bharat Financial and Indescent Bank with a swap ratio of 639 shares of Indescent Bank for every thousand shares of uh, Bharat Financial held. Bharat Financial gains in trade as the deal values the stock at a significant premium. To Friday's closing price. Okay, well, joining us this afternoon, we have Gorang Shah as well as Prakash Gaba to answer answer all of your stock queries. Afternoon, gentlemen. Well, let's get going in terms of the first question that we have. We have Atul who writes to us from Nagpur. He holds 70 shares of Bharat Financial at uh, 808 since the past two months. He's a short term investor, wants to know whether to hold or sell that particular stock. Well, Gorang, then over to you. Uh, what do you think about the deal, the swap ratio, the advantages eventually of this particular deal, and what would you recommend to Atul on his holding? Thanks, Victor. Good afternoon to all of you all, and uh, wish you all a very happy Diwali and a New Year. After the news flow, my sense is that, uh, and of course, as a disclosure, Victor, we did do, we do have positive coverage on Bharat Financial as well as Indusind Bank. Mm -hmm. So, stock up for almost about 2.5% uh, as we speak. Uh, our sense is that the merger will make, uh, uh, bring in a very strong entity, not that Indusind Bank is any weak bank, but uh, I think post-merger there will be a lot of uh, uh, opportunity uh, to take the business forward in your area. So, my sense is that instead of short term, hold on to Bharat Financials from a long term point of view. And of course, post-merger you will have a great entity. Okay, all right. Uh, so that's the fundamental view coming in on Bharat uh, Financial. Uh, holding on to gains, uh, in particular, if you take a look at the broader markets as well, a couple of stocks that are moving around, and that's what's helping the mid-cap index, though relatively underperforming uh, today. Otherwise, it's uh, still holding in the green. But uh, let's get in our query. We have uh, Mr. Banerjee, who calls us from Kolkata, and he has investments in LIC Housing <coughs> Finance. I think he's bought those uh, shares at around 646. Uh, hi, Mr. Banerjee. Sure. Yes, sir. Uh, how can we help you? Yeah, uh, I'm a short-term investor. Okay. And uh, I've bought 500 shares of LIC Housing Finance. Okay. Uh, so uh, I'd like to know what will be the target uh, for me uh, by October expiry. Oh, very short-term. Okay. Uh, yes, sir. Prakash, uh, your take over there, he's making around uh, 10 bucks approximately. Uh, what should he do? First thing, he, since he's a short-term investor, he's expi looking for expiry until October. The first thing you need to do is put a stop, tight yeah. stop below 650, and let it play its workout. 
quite possible it can climb to 680 if it goes there exit Okay, well, uh, that's on LIC Housing Finance, but we're not really done with all of the NBFCs. Padmavati writes to us from Uttar Pradesh. She holds 50 shares of Vivan Housing, DHFL, at 200 since the past two years. Long-term investor wants to know whether to hold or sell that particular stock. Well, Gaurang, uh, over to you then on DHFL. What would you recommend? Um, it's actually quite a big, bit of profit that Padmavati is sitting on. So, uh, would you recommend her to continue holding or maybe book out a bit? Well, uh, Ikta, if she's not in a hurry, I don't think there is any need to book profits, despite the fact that she's making a handsome gain on her investment. And actually, for the last one and a half year, uh, DHFL act has been an outperformer. Ikta. So, my sense, mm -hmm. and of course, with the government policies, uh, my sense is that the loan book growth is going to be even much more better as we go forward. So, long term hold on unless you are not in high. Okay, all right. Uh, so that's the view that's coming in there on uh, DHFL. By the way, just keep an, uh, an eye out on the index. We are moving higher now as we speak. So, a couple of those heavyweight stocks must be moving. But for the time being, pull up Sun Pharma. Uh, the intraday chart should come up over there. That one is spiked up. Bharti Airtel, that's moved to the high point of the day. It's sitting with a gain of close to around 4.5%. Sun Pharma breezing along, good run being uh, seen over there. And I say, I say, bank, that's a rather large weight. When that moves up, definitely helps the Nifty Bank as well as Axis Bank. That one, in fact, was down close to around 2%. It's trying to cut its losses. So that explains why, in fact, the Nifty is making a bit of an attempt to move to the high point of the day. Slip into a snappy break, come back. And we'll continue answering all your queries. Stay with us. Let's get talking in, a couple, in terms of a couple of numbers. Kansai Nerulak reported what seems to be actually a good set of Q2 numbers. We have Mr. H.M. Baruka, the Vice Chairman and MD of the company now to discuss uh, the earnings gone by. Hi, sir. Thank you. By addressing uh, the fact that you're, you had some GST-related adjustments this quarter and adjusted for that your revenue was up around 16 odd percent. Can you just tell us what these adjustments were, whether it's limited only to this quarter because of the implementation of GST and how do things work when we want to look at your revenue for the next couple of quarters? Uh, first of all, good afternoon and happy Diwali to all your viewers. Um, okay, coming on the numbers, uh, so I think it's uh, the way it is uh, reflected uh, by the SEBI and the uh, AS guidelines. So last year, uh, last quarter, we had excise duty included in the top line, and because of GST, there is no excise duty. So GST is removed from this quarter. So if you if you compare like to like comparison, then we have given explanation, and that is why the growth appears to be 16%. So that's a real growth. So real growth is 16% in value terms, hmm. and uh, so that's the explanation. Yeah. All right, uh, Mr. Baruka, if you could give us some more clarity. What was the volume growth? You could break it up for us in terms of decorative as well as non-decorative. Uh, total volume and uh, you could give us segmental performance as well. So uh, this has been a good quarter. Total volume growth is about 18% and value growth is about 16%. In decorative growth is more than 20% wow. and industrial growth is around 10%. So, so I think... Uh, both the businesses have done well and mm. even in the industrial segment, uh, there are two segments, auto segment and the general industrial segment. Mm. Auto segments uh, did better, I would say. I mean, other than the passenger car, the, I think growth for auto segment has been very good in this quarter. Mm. So overall, it has been a very good quarter for all segments have done extremely well. Okay. Uh, Mr. Baruka, you know, your statistics in terms of volume growth are sounding very positive at this point. And uh, this comes in, in at a time when there is obviously some amount of concern with regards to growth. So give us more on-ground uh, information in terms of what's happening on ground with the business, whether you see this volume growth continuing and what led to this kind of volume growth that you saw. Uh, where exactly did you see the pickup? Which are the geographies that you're seeing a pickup in? I have been always saying the paint industry is doing well and it will always have a double digit volume growth uh, despite whatever hiccups which are there in the market. Even during slowdown of 2008, we had a double digit growth. Hmm. So I think paint industry is into the sweet spot. So we will always have a double digit growth. That is what I believe. Leave aside one quarter or two quarters. As far as this quarter is concerned, of course, uh, par partially I would say, restocking of uh, GST in the month of July and Diwali is one month earlier, so that could have also contributed to higher growth. Okay. But despite all this, I would say we will have a double-digit growth going forward as well. 
All right, uh, Mr. Baruka, you know, uh, there's going to be a low base that's going to play out in quarter three. Uh, first half of the I think you've done growth of roughly around 14-15%, margins of around 17 to around 17.5%. For the second half of the year, what kind of a number you're looking at? Uh, and if you could translate that down to FI80 numbers. I don't think there's a low base as far as paint industry is concerned. Paint industry has, has been having a good growth uh, throughout the years, I would say, even the last year. So I don't think low base is going to affect, here, uh, affect the industry. Uh, there's no low base here. But we will still have a double-digit growth. And as far as margins are concerned, I think we depend upon the crude oil price and other derivatives. I mean, unfortunately for us, uh, mm. last uh, six months prices have been rising which has actually to some extent affected the margin. We have been able to pass on some margin in case of decorative, partial in case of industrial. And uh, so that is why you would see marginal drop in the uh, profitability, uh, substantial drop in the material cost, but uh, which is partially compensated by reduction in the overheads. Mm -hmm. So we hope to maintain this margin, uh, whatever uh, we have uh, achieved this year, that would be our endeavor. Mm -hmm. So, uh, do you think that the hiccups with the GST implementation would be behind us now? See, there are GST issues definitely in the market as far as, you know, trading community is concerned because definitely they are confused. There are, if, if you go to a dealer shop, there are uh, various kinds of product which they sell, which is ranging from 0% to 28% of GST. Mm. So please look at the administrative inconvenience which is having. When he prepares the bill, he has to make five kind of you know GST calculation. How does he explain to the customer? And uh, there are customer who comes and says they don't want you know bill. So but bill has to be prepared. So I think these are the administrative inconvenience which they are facing. Otherwise, I think uh, GST per se is not having a major impact to my uh, mind. Dealers are understanding, but the problem is consumer on the small uh, dealer network, for which I think government has come out with a good solution, extended the composite scheme, mm. so mm. which will certainly help the marginal dealer. So I don't think it's a major challenge as being made out, even though there are administrative hiccups. So if you had to just put a number to it, sir, if we, before we let you go about the GST impact, um, how much do you think the impact would be, say, on your gross margins as well as on your top line, uh, based on exactly what you said? I don't think GST is going to have any impact on our top line and the bottom line, and uh, we will still have a growth. So GST is not going to affect uh, in any way as far as we are concerned. Marginally, maybe unorganized, unorganized sector would have got affected, but mm. I don't think we would be affected by the GST. All right. Uh, thanks so much, sir, for stopping by and, in fact, giving us uh, all those details. All Thank the best you. for the second half of this fiscal. Before we slip into a short break, let's pull up one stock, Glenmark Pharma. In today's chart, should come up for you on the screen. We are talking about Sun Pharma spiking up. Let's see if someone has uh, dipped into uh, Glenmark Pharma as well. That spikes up as we speak. A uh, couple of stocks which are in focus right now. So Shiva Cement is spiked up quite nicely, up around 19 odd percent. We have Suven Life also, we've been pointing that out, is doing quite well, up around 11 odd percent. Um, and a lot of traction in multiple types of different stocks. So for example, Idea Cellular is up around 5 odd percent. We have Rupa and Company, which is up around 4 odd percent. Um, we have some more details which is coming in from Federal Bank where the slippages have come down on a sequential basis and that's the reason, but that's one of the reasons why you're seeing that optimism come in on Federal Bank and the net interest margins also which have actually improved on a sequential basis, so 3.3% versus 3.13%. And uh, the restructured book, however, has increased a tad bit, but we we'll more, need more color in terms of what uh, uh, they are perceiving in terms of the restructured book but nonetheless the slippages figure especially and the net interest margin seem to be adding that incremental amount of bounce and optimism that you're seeing for Federal Bank at this point in time but that's all the time that we have on this show uh, you can keep sending us all of your queries well closing bell will come up next stay tuned markets there open up more or less in the green.
from a single micro credit organization monoline micro credit organization we will be able to become a full fledged financial inclusion organization savings and so on and so forth in this bull market the corrections like as in the case in global markets will be shallow the rgo uh, reporting a positive uh, 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 ebitda in the very first quarter mm. uh, comes as a significant a positive surprise it's a half a percent gain and 10200 is here the initial uh, part of the quarter was a bit weak but as we came closer to the share i think the footfalls have been very strong the so godrej agrivet listing is indeed 36% higher i don't think it's a mature bull market in small caps okay. they had just 3 months back taken out the highs of 2008 It's coming at 2.6 uh, percent. Uh, the number now that's much lower than what we were prepared for. On a year-on-year basis, the provisions are more or less flattish, but on a sequential basis, there's a bit of a downtick, and that could be supporting uh, the profit number as well. Okay, 30 points on the Nifty right now, 10,197. Uh, so it's steady after that initial surge, which. took the nifty up almost 70 points at one point in the day okay some more numbers now dhfs numbers look uh, quite okay prime of se uh, that's a stock which has of course done well for the market overall it's been a good day and a decent follow through is what we have seen in today's trade though the bank nifty has sucked a bit uh, this is closing bell i am anuj with me surubi hi surubi good afternoon hi uh, anuj good afternoon i guess numbers haven't really disappointed today mm. so far what we've seen from bajaj finance dhfl as you mentioned got federal bank numbers so uh, not too bad but what's the sense on the day i mean we've managed to hold mm. gains at this this pretty high lofty level should bulls take some heart from that yeah you know, today's key has been that there were two intraday dips on the nifty both were bought mm. uh, surubi you know one at around 10:30 to 11 mm. and the other i think the proverbial 1 to 1:30 dip that happens on a trend day so those two dips were bought in today's trade the bank nifty has underperformed but mm. you know that had a big rally over the last two or three days and this time the expiry is a day ahead because of diwali so the expiry is on wednesday but even that's off the low point and there the main reason is access bank and the way the you know the market's getting a bit nervous about those numbers but you know i take your point on earnings i think that good start is continuing federal dhfl bajaj finance nothing to scoff at those numbers mm. just that stocks have run up a lot so maybe some profit taking and of course telecom has done well select auto stocks have done well so all in all still good going well telecom you made that point on uh, yeah. bharti in the morning itself and it's been such a strong day then we got incremental news flow that maybe there's some kind of a merger with the uh, dth business happening so maybe tata's buy that out but what's the sense from on bharti from here yeah, you know honestly i'm not surprised with the telecom move today mm. both on bharti and idea and, and i you know say that because you know we pointed that out in the morning that ki just keep an eye on some of these stocks because you know look sort of if if you're willing to give a reliance geo the kind of valuation that you're now giving just mm. two years back you were giving negative valuation to geo now all of a sudden if you're building in say 1.6 lakh crores 1.7 lakh crores whatever you're building in in that case you know uh, you have a a company like bharti airtel which has had multi decade you know uh, business established uh, and it's gone through a multi year bear market mm-hmm. just to put things in perspective today bharti airtel has made a 9 year high uh, and you know in 9 years technically we say 9 year high because it's not done anything in the, in the 9 years right mm-hmm. from that point it's gone through a bear market and it's uh, seen a bit of a recovery so uh, and the kind of delivery buying that you saw on friday and if you look if you go through bharti share holding pattern you will see that you know there's not too many who hold bharti airtel so just a bit of buying can really propel the stock you saw big buying on friday my sense is you'll see another good number on bharti airtel as far as the delivery numbers are concerned even in today's trade and that's rubbing off on idea as well okay well well more earnings coming through telecom doing well that disbursement number is pretty solid for the one housing 51% though the top line number is slightly below what motilal oswal was expecting we'll get you more analysis as we go forward but right now let's start off with the headlines the market recovers from the day's low after the nifty hits a new intraday high in opening trade the nifty bank makes an intraday comeback to post steady gains but it's underperforming the nifty today mid caps also underperform Metals shine brightest with steel stocks leading the pack on strong Asian cues but some private banks like Karnataka Bank and Indusin Bank take a hit. Reliance Industries fails to hold early gains despite a surprisingly strong performance from Jio in the second quarter but Jio's numbers have a positive spin off on other telecom stocks Bharti Airtel up almost 5% Idea 2 gains over 5%. It's a strong listing for Godrej Agrovit. The stock lists at a price of 628 rupees a share, a near 40% premium to the issue price. It's currently trading with gains of about 30%. 
It's a done deal for Bharat Financial and Indusind Bank with a swap ratio of 639 shares of Indusind Bank for every 1,000 Bharat Financial shares held. Bharat Financial gains in trade as the deal values the stock at over 1,100 rupees per share. Okay, how should you position yourself in this last hour of trade? Ashwini Gujral and Mitesh Thakkar now join us with closing strategies. Uh, good afternoon. Uh, Ashwini, uh, Nifty dips have been bought. Uh, Bank Nifty has underperformed a bit. Your thoughts on uh, the, the two major indices? Uh, how would you approach trade from here on? And of course, we'll talk about stocks as well. Well, I think uh, uh, we've had a large rally on the Nifty. Not as much on the Bank Nifty, but... Uh, uh, chances are we could get into a bit of a range uh, with the low end being 10,180 to about uh, 10,250. So two or three days if we can hold on because often what can happen is that there can be a false breakout and you go back into the range. So maybe, uh, you know, bulls are taking their foot off the pedal to see whether this range is sustained. So next two, three days, uh, I would think we move sideways, particularly going to Diwali where, uh, you know, people uh, take off and uh, there isn't too much volume, etc. But uh, overall, uh, uptrend remains as long as uh, probably 10,150 uh, remains intact. As far as individual stocks are concerned, uh, Bajaj Auto is a buy with a stop of 3170, target of 3320. Oberoi Realty is a buy with a stop of 460, target of 485. And uh, Jubilant Food is a buy with a stop of 1530, target of 1600. Okay, we'll also be pouring over the Oberoi Realty numbers uh, in a bit. Uh, those are Ashuni's calls. Let's also bring in Mitesh. Mitesh, how have you read the day today? Pretty strong on the Frontline Index. And what stocks would you trade in the last hour? quite good i think you know very clearly sustaining about 10,180 200 i think at least for an immediate basis which is one two day trend basis i think is very important and we have done that uh, i think today's low in that sense become an important marker around 10,175 and i think that's the trailing stop loss for people who are trading with extreme short term bias uh, we're still trading with long bias the two stocks which uh, which i have on my recommendation list i think bajaj auto is a common stock I would recommend a buy with a stop at 31.75 for targets of 33.40. And Federal Bank, clearly with numbers, strong volumes and a good breakout above levels of 121, 122. That's a buy as well. Keep a stop at 119 for targets of 133. Okay. <clears throat> Let's just look at some more stocks and uh, uh, see how uh, things are shaping up over there. Uh, uh, it's been a good day, of course, for uh, metal stocks. But the sector of the last 30 minutes or so there is... Uh, Pharma, let's just pull out some intraday charts. Uh, Sipla and Sun Pharma, both of them actually, uh, if you see the intraday chart, that's the Nifty Pharma, which is now up about one and a quarter percent. Sipla is up about two and a half percent. And Sun Pharma in late trade has made a bit of a move. I think Nigel was uh, pointing that out. Uh, uh, now trading at high point, two percent higher on that. Uh, uh, Ashwani, thoughts on uh, Sun Pharma? See. 200-day moving average is still, you know, 590. So it's just kind of rear guard action where uh, underperforming spaces also put their hand up. But I don't think there's anything significant uh, that is changing on Sun Pharma. That will change only once we start trading above 590, 600. Okay. All right, gentlemen. Then on that note, let's kick in our stock 360 segment. Of course, we pick up one stock, look at it from all angles, fundamental, technical, news flow, and everything else. The one today we've chosen is from the telecom space. Uh, Ronith has more details on the buzz behind Idea Cellular. Is it geo impact? Is it something else, Ronith? Well, it's all together, Surbi, actually. So I'll start with what happened last week. Idea got shareholder approval for their merger with Vodafone. So, you know, the merger is likely to conclude by FY18 itself, whereas analysts pegged it at FY19. So this is one positive. That's why the stock is up today. Second, we go to the post-merger structure and how it will look like. So Idea Vodafone together will be around a $23 billion entity and they'll be number one in India in India with 40 crore subscribers compared to Airtel and um, Jio, which are quite less compared to that right now. Now, if I see Vodafone will own 45%, Idea will own 26%, and the public will own around 28%. Now, moving on to the revenue market share currently, Bharti Airtel is around 41%, but the combined Idea Vodafone will be 43%, which is the largest among all of them, and they'll become number one. 
So we'll start with Motilal, what they said. So Motilal said that the combined entity's margins will go on to around 32% by FY20, which is around 22% for IDEA. So that's a jump of around 10 percentage points. And second, they quoted around EV bits, quoting at EV bit of 5.2 times for FY20 versus Airtel that is quoting around 6 times right now. So clearly it will cheaper compared to Airtel. And finally now, but not all is well for IDEA. If you see the data revenue per MB has fallen from around 24.6 paise to 5.4 paise, which is a fall of 78%. Next, moving on to the ARPU, that's the average revenue per user. If you see Q1, they had Q1 FY16, it was 180 rupees, but now in the last quarter, it's 140 rupees, which is a fall of around 21%, thanks to Jio as usual. But Motilal says all is not bad. By Q3, everything should rebound, and it'll be interesting to see how everything pans out going ahead. Back to you. Okay, Ronit, thanks a lot for that. Uh, SP Tilsen of SPTilsen.com is uh, with us. Uh, Mr. Tilsen, good afternoon. Uh, so, stocks breaking out after a uh, long bear market, Bharti in particular, uh, up 42% this year. Uh, I think it will be more after today's move. Uh, idea as well moving on. Your, your thoughts on what's happening in this space and whether you would buy either Bharti or Idea right now? See, Anuj, if I take a fundamental view, I don't think that there is any kind of improvement having seen taken place in Idea or in Bharti Airtel. But yes, maybe some kind of technical factors and the recent news flows like Bharti Airtel, you know, we all know that when Reliance Geo launched their, uh, their, their, their services about six months back at that time, you know, it, it was hugely under -owned. And in fact, we have seen the overseas investors or maybe the FII is having exited from the stock to a great extent right? because actually if you really see the institutional holding is quite uh, the public shareholding is quite low in case of Bharti Airtel so whatever has to you know the realignment or the churning has to happen has happened but yes you you cannot expect that all the investors will get out from the company because you have the what you call the future of the of the of the telecom scene in the in the country mainly because of three four reasons one that they've recently bought the Tata Tele services uh, voice this one you know at, at virtually free of cost consolidation that only three players are seen existing in the in the in the in the space and going forward that probably you know market has assumed that the bottom has come in terms of the financial performance but i don't agree firstly i don't see that for that, that there only three players will will going to remain now you know for for, for at least you know continuously or on a, on a on a longer term horizon this is just a near term reshuffling where you can say that first will be idea vodafone in terms of the subscriber combination second will be bharti airtel and third will be reliance geo but if you really take the performance of the reliance geo it has to catch on to a great extent you just can't extrapolate the q q2 numbers you know the revenue of 6150 6, crore as you know taking that to be the revenue of 23 24000 crore in fact that will increase and that's what in fact on the result day of reliance industries i've said that 23.5 percent EBITDA margin having posted by the company is not very good though the market has been very happy with that because the operating leverages will really be seen going forward for reliance industries which can see the EBITDA margin ramping up to 28 30 percent number two number three if you really see going forward maybe not now let the idea vodafone merger happens let this bharti airtel consolidation happens then you will see the global two or three global players again coming back in india whether it happens with at and or you know i don't know i won't be able to say that which all players will come but we should not presume that the that, that, that the market will just be controlled by three players going forward at least in india so i'm not keeping a fundamental positive view on the on the telecom stocks this could just be uh, uh, what you call the combination of so many factors that near term uh, up, up, uptick seen in the fundamentals and the consolidation and some kind of news flows but if you take the situation going forward even the financial performance of uh, of idea is going to remain very critical very very very, very pathetic. And in fact, we don't have the financials of Vodafone available to us on a quarterly basis, so difficult to comment. So overall, maybe this, uh, uh, this this could be just seen because of the technical and part of the fundamental reason for the shares to see, uh, share of Bharti Airtel seen having moved up so much. Okay, all right, uh, Mr. Tulsian. So that's the take on the telecom space and how these stocks are faring today. By the way, a couple of NBFC is having a good run. I mean, uh, stocks like uh, Manapuram, LIC Housing, uh, the one housing still in positive territory as those numbers trickle in. So NPA numbers are absolutely stable. Uh, we will discuss NBFCs in a bit. We have a couple of important earnings, NBFC earnings to go over as well. That's after the break. But before we do that, our closing bell money control question of the day is, is telecom sector a good investment bet at current levels? Log on to moneycontrol.com. Tell us what you think. We'll read out some of the most interesting responses after 3.30. 
Time for a break. Our newsmaker today is what else but the market itself, for the market which has. Uh,